We have some news about the Halo TV show and about Master Chief's face being revealed and how the show has been approved for a second season already. Do you want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So this was recently announced on the Halo the series Twitter page saying it was renewed for a second season, which is absolutely awesome for the show. I know myself, I have my concerns. A lot of people have their own concerns as well when it comes to this Halo TV show and will it live up to the extraordinary expectations that a game series like Halo has built itself up to? Can it translate properly to the silver screen? Well, it looks like season one is popular enough amongst all the popular reviewers and the producers for the show. They're like, we need a second season of the Halo TV show, which is absolutely awesome to hear. Gives me higher hopes that this show will actually be pretty good for Halo. Like, obviously it's not following traditional Halo lore, which I know a lot of Halo fans are upset about that. Me personally, I would like to see it be part of lore, but I understand that what happens in game might not be translating very well to what happens in the show as it's two different types of storytelling when it comes to video games and shows. IGN posted an article Article about this as well talking about the show and being renewed for a second season if you guys remember that it is March 24th is when this series will start they also mentioned here that David Wiener who's part of the Brave New World show will be joining the second season as the showrunner and executive producer for the show taking over for Stephen Kane and Kyle Killen who are both showrunners that were expected to depart from the Halo show after season one so I know I've seen a few posts out there people saying like oh my god we're losing our showrunners for the Halo TV show, this thing is doomed, and that's not exactly the case. I'm pretty sure that was expected to happen, as I mentioned within this article, because you know, people, especially a part of like the produ production part of things, rotate around quite a bit. Uh, usually with TV shows, there's a new director almost every single episode when it comes to a TV show. Uh, for the most part and so this kind of stuff these kind of rotations of people coming in and out makes sense and it's totally typical so i wouldn't look too much into that kind of stuff though this tweet from jeff Keeley over here really provides some really interesting information about the halo tv show saying interview with ign it was confirmed that master chief's face will be unmasked in the halo series and you will see his face which as any longtime Halo fan like myself and probably you watching, probably like, oh my God, they're showing Master Chief's face, which we've never seen before in the show, because that's kind of the appeal of Master Chief. You kind of place yourself into the shoes of the super soldier and you kind of play out how you want. IGN and Kiki Wolfkill, who's a part of Transmedia at 343, go into this a little bit more. In an interview with Ryan McCaffrey, Kiki Wolfkill, like I mentioned, who's the head of Transmedia at 343, said this about the reveal of his face, right? Saying, I think we set out to tell a character story and a personal story. And once we really got into that story was it became clear that we really need to see the person in the armor and under the helmet. You will see his face, she confirmed. For some people, it's been a moment 20 years in the making. And for other people, it is something that feels very hard to imagine. We absolutely respect both sides of that fence. Those who really want to see Chief's face and those who really don't. But for the nature of this story, it felt important to connect with the Master Chief in a different way and that meant showing his face. Which if you do a Google search of Master Chief's face, you definitely see some interesting takes, some photoshops and things like that. Like in game, the closest thing that we got was the end of Halo 4, the Legendary Edition, where you got a chance to see his eyes, right? Like that's about it. We see Master Chief's face in the Fall of Reach animated series, which again, like it's him like as a child when he was about like seven years old. So not exactly a one-to-one -one translation because we know Master Chief is a much older character. We kind of want to know what he looks like now as we know the Master Chief. So this certainly isn't the first time we've seen Chief's face in any form of media, but this will be like the first like real time we've seen him because we get to see Chief as we've known him. And it kind of came with an assumption as they brought in Pablo Schreiber, who is the actor who plays Master Chief, who honestly does a pretty good job for a Master Chief voice. Cortana. I'm gonna need you now. And we see all the other Spartans faces with Master Chief as well. And if Master Chief is supposed to be like, just another Spartan or he's like the Master Chief as we kind of build him up into the games, then that's definitely a different kind of dynamic. Personally, I'm into the idea of seeing Master Chief's face. Again, you have to do it right though. It can't just be like after the very first mission rip off the helmet and be like, oh, hey, what's up? 
it's me, Master Chief. Like, it needs to be something important, something like a actual moment. Because, well, Halo as a whole, Bungie and 343 have both made it a pretty big deal to keep his face hidden from the player. And so when you actually show it in the show, it needs to be a profound moment within the series. One show that did an awesome job about this is The Mandalorian, which this scene right here, I believe happened at the end of season one of The Mandalorian, if I remember correctly, where you actually do get to see his face, which is a big moment and a really big thing, especially within like the lore of The Mandalorian, where like taking off their helmet is a big, big issue when it comes to these Mandalorians out there. And the only reason why he takes off his helmet because he takes serious damage where like he probably would have died and a bot right here tells him that like, hey, don't worry, I got your back. I can heal you. I'm not an organic being. You're not gonna be ruining your creed or whatever, anything like that. That's why like something like this is so amazing where like you can show the Mandalorian's face while also not showing his face at the same time, but eventually you kind of need to make that connection with the character, but he only takes his helmet off at very crucial moments. We need that similar kind of moment to happen within the Halo TV show as well. We need to make it so like when he does take off his helmet, it's very, very serious or very needed. And as Kiki Wolfkill mentioned within this article, mentioned about how, well, as they wrote out the story, it just kind of came more and more apparent that they need to show his face to kind of make this connection with that character. And when he stated that way, it makes you feel like they tried to not show his face to kind of be more true to the games. But maybe there was like a moment that was really awesome that came around, but they just absolutely need to show his face or something like that. Then they would have to have it happen. I could totally see it happening with the character of Quan Ah, who is going to be like kind of this like, misfit kind of like young teenager character that's going to be following along Master Chief along his journey throughout the story. And maybe there's going to be some really crucial moment where like he needs to be like, believe me, like one to one, like look at my face kind of moment. That's where you kind of take off the helmet in those kind of situations. I could totally see something like that happening. But like I said earlier, if it's just going to be like an average conversation, like, hey guys, we just finished the mission. Hey guys, I'm Master Chief. How's it going? Like, yeah. Don't do that. I guess this is part of that benefit of having a silver timeline, right? Where whatever happens in the story doesn't affect what happens like lore wise when it comes to the games. This is the kind of stuff that they were talking about when they needed to have a separate lore type of timeline with the show compared to the games and books and stuff like that because different mediums require different types of storytelling and sometimes you need to kind of break what's canon to make a really good story and well, Season two is already happening at the Halo TV show before we've even seen the first episode. So it makes me think that this is gonna be a pretty good show. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I definitely will be redoing a bunch of reviews of each episode as when they go live, giving you guys my thoughts and opinions and how as a long-term Halo fan, such as myself, I've been playing since Combat Evolved, how it accurately portrays the feelings of Halo while also not being part of the lore. It's gonna be very interesting. But you know what really is interesting? subscribing to this channel so you can stay up to date with all the Halo news because you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me check out this playlist right here and thank you so much for watching I greatly appreciate it I'll catch you on the next one peace out